again. It's good to be back with you. I got a question the other day about doing a two bar str uh, truss problem with a distributed load. Sounds like a good idea to me. So let's do that. What I've got right here is a very simple two bar truss. This is the simplest possible structure. It's got two rigid elements. This is going to be a statics problem, okay? So we're not talking about deformations now. We're just talking about forces. So I've got two rigid elements, uh, element number one and element number two. And keeping with my convention, I've underlined the numbers because those kind of look like bars to me. And I've got grid points A, B, and C. So the points, I've got circles around because those kind of look like points. So I've got a real simple distributed load across this 1,000 newtons per meter over a one meter truss. I'm sorry, one meter bar up there. So remember the, the format for statics problems is GFSA. That's given, find, solve, answer. So given is all this stuff. This is the stuff that's set out for you in the problem statement. So we know all that stuff. Well, we don't really have a problem. We won't know we're, we're done until we know what we're going to find. So for this one, let's find force number two. Okay, that's the force in that bar right there. We could find a lot of different things, but that's pretty good. So the next thing is solve or solution, either one. Alrighty. And uh, where are we going to start with this? Well, with any statics problem, just like with any strength of materials problem, if you are not doing a free body diagram about here, something's wrong. All right? So let's do a free body diagram. Now there's a bunch of different ways to solve this problem. Here's the one I've chosen. Now if you cho choose a different method for solving this and uh, come up with it's legitimate, you'll come up with the same answer. There's more than one path that gets you to the final point here and gets you there correctly. So what I've got here is let's, let's, let's do the uh, element one here. Now I picked this after trying a couple of different solution methods. Like I say, if you pick a different solution method but still get you to the end point, that's fine. I've done a million of these so I know what to look for. If you don't, that's okay. All right? I better be this good at it by now. So there's my distributed force. Now, let, I, I've cut this out. I'm going to need the forces at A and the forces at B. If I cut something out, I can't just ignore the forces where uh, connected to the rest of the structure. So let's put that there. And I don't really know what these are. I'm going to just guess they're this direction. There's AX and AY. So that's the force. I got these backwards, don't I? AX and AY. And as always, I should have put this up here before. Here's my positive sign convention. All right, this is the one I'll normally use unless I have a pretty good reason not to. Well, there's no obvious reason here, so let's let's just stick with the the, the normal approach here. Okay, so I've got two sets of forces. I've got AX and AY at this end that come from that pin, and BX and BY that come from the right end because of this pin. Now notice there's no moments. Well, that's the whole idea of a pin joint. I've actually got a pin joint here that I made. I use this for lots of things. But there's a pin joint, and the whole idea here is you can't apply a moment because it's, it's free to move, all right? So that's what's going on here. I can apply forces in this direction. I could pull that way if I want, and I could push this way if I want, but I can't apply a moment, all right? That's what's going on here that's why there's no, no possible moments there. So there's what we've got. Well, here's the problem. I've got this, this thousand newtons per meter. It's pretty obvious it's going to be a thousand newtons eventually. But what do I do with that? Well, here's the deal. This bar right here knows it's got a distributed load across it. If I, if I were trying to, this were a strength of materials problem, and I were trying to find stresses across that bar, it would be very important to keep this distributed load exactly as it is. However, the forces at A and the forces at B don't know that that's a distributed load. If I take the magnitude of this load and place it at the centroid of that rectangle right there, the forces AX, AY, and BX, and BY will be the same. These two pin joints here don't know whether I've got a distributed load or an equivalent concentrated load. The bar knows, but A and B don't. So, what I can do is I can concentrate this load at the centroid of where that you know, rectangle would be, and I will get the right reaction forces at A and B. So, let's do that. So, we'll concentrate that distributed load, 
to concentrate the force. I guess that sounds good. And I'm going to draw this again, badly as it turns out. Um, there's a x, there's a y, b x, and b y. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place one load in the middle. I've got a thousand newtons per meter over a distance of one meter. So I'm just going to put a thousand newtons right there. Okay. Now, I'm lying a little bit. This bar will know the difference, but those two points won't. All right. So let's see here. It's pretty obvious that that's going to be, uh, let's see, a half a meter there and a half a meter there. Okay, because this load is evenly distributed. Now, if this were a triangular shaped load or something else, that would have to move. But since it's rectangular, it's applied uniformly across the bar, I can just place it right at the middle. So it's pretty obvious here that that's going to be 500 newtons, and that's going to be 500 newtons. I'm just appealing to symmetry here. I'm not going through the equations of equilibrium. If you want to, go right ahead and you'll get these answers. So I've got that I know what the vertical components are. I don't know what the horizontal components are. If I did, I'd be able to figure out force two. So, what do I do from here? Well, there's a couple of choices. I'm going to go to the method of joints, something we do in statics a lot. And I'm going to draw... Okay, let's see. Let's, 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 uh, let's, let's number these here. That's uh, step one. That's step two. And that's step three. So I'm going to try the method of joints here. At point B. Okay? Now, I can cut out any part of the structure and all of the forces have to be in static equilibrium. So let's do that. Okay? I know now that I've got a downward force of 500 newtons. Okay? I've got a force here, I and mean, that's pretty much got to be in uh, compression or tension, I should say. So there's that, and I'll apply that force there. So there's F1, and there's F2. So there's, there's what we got so far. I want to make sure I stay in frame here. I'm just about out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, erase up here, and I'm going to continue the calculations up there. But there's what the, the uh, free body diagram looks like for point B. So let's see here, I'll get rid of that, I guess. All right, so what do I know here? I know that the sum of the vertical forces must be zero, so the vertical component of force two must be equal to 500 newtons. Well, let's do that. So let's see, four. Sum of the forces in the x direction must be zero for point B. Well, let's do that. That's going to be down, so I've got minus 500 newtons plus. Now I've got to get the vertical component of F2 there, knowing that that's 30 degrees. All right. So the vertical component is going to be F2 sine 30 degrees, and that has to all equal zero. Well, if I look at this, I've got one equation and one unknown. All right, sounds good. Fundamental theorem of algebra is that I have to have as many equations as I have unknowns. Well, there's only one unknown. This is easy. So if I do this, I'm going to get F2 equals 500 newtons over sine 30 degrees. Sine 30 degrees is a half. So that's going to be 1,000 newtons. And there we have it. So I've gone GFS. I've done, done the solution. So the last thing I'm going to do here is write out answer and that's going to be 1,000 newtons. And there you have it. All right. So we've dealt with a distributed load, concentrated the load to find the reaction forces, and now we have the answer, the force in F2. Hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.